All right, guys. Uh, a lot of people asked me to watch this video for a while now. It's a, a video from Jay Aubrey from about a week ago. It's called The Depraved World of the Duggars, A Biblical Scandal. I'm assuming it's religious related, but also you can say it's a scandal of a biblical proportions. Ah. <laughs> uh. Funny gut, funny papa. Pretty good dad jokes. Let's play it, baby. Clash between old By the way, I've never heard of the Duggars. Fashion values in a modern made for reality TV scandal. Don't downplay this, especially after what you guys have done in the name of Christianity and God to other people. This is a spiritual issue. This is, is that, a Is that Whoopi Goldberg? You know, my favorite moment of Whoopi Goldberg is when I watch The Little Rascals. And uh, one of the kids is like, is that your mom over there? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, hi. And he goes, Whoopi. Is <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's actually funny to me. It's so stupid. I'm such a, I'm a weirdo. You have to go poop and you saw my stream? Very poggers. The presented itself as the perfect- That's one family? Bob told police Josh had been disciplined. That's one family? What? What is this? Oh, I can never. Family presented itself as the perfect all-American Christian family. <laughs> Ooh. Wow, that was intense. Cool. Let's talk about reality TV. More Let's specifically, TLC. Originally established as the Learning Channel in 1980, over the years, TLC... They used to be the Learning Channel, now they just show a bunch of fat people? That's crazy. Jesus, I guess they are teaching us to be fat. ...became the ultimate hub for the most strange, shocking, and disgusting forms of television you could ever be so unlucky to witness. Bro. I love sniffing and chewing dirty diapers. I have to have Why? Why would you like? Why do you enjoy that? Okay, made me a little bit sick. Peonage. Whether it be my five wives buying naked or the ninety day fiance universe, my inches are where it counts. I personally can think of no better way than to end my day with a nice cold beverage and a brand new episode of Cougar Wives. See, over time, the TLC discovered that catering to audiences' morbid curiosities is what would ultimately benefit their bottom line the most. The truth is that TLC will broadcast just about anything without a second thought as long as it gets ratings. But this story starts with a modest little family out of northwestern Arkansas, a popular reality TV show I believe it's pronounced Arkansas. Ticting Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar's journey and raising a grand total of 19 children under fundamentalist Baptist principles. His name is Jim Bob. They have 19 kids. Are they all like from the one woman? Wow, God bless her. How is she pumping those? That's 19 years of push them out. What? Over the eight years they spent on cable TV, the Duggars not only broke records in terms of ratings, but became a spiritual icon for all to bear God. witness. I have been a Christian kids. household myself. I actually spent a fair bit of time watching them with my family. Even Interesting. I grew up pretty religious, actually. My mother used to take me to, uh, I almost said court. <laughs> I might as well be. Am I right, guys? This is so boring. <laughs> church every week. We used to go to church every like Christmas, Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, I don't remember. Um... You know, we we didn't lose the faith, but we didn't we weren't as active at a certain point. But uh, yeah, you know, I used to be like I I grew up a Rome, uh, Roman Catholic. Um, so sure. At eleven years old, I was never the biggest fan, and thought they were a little odd at times. Oh man, good job! But back then, my underdeveloped <laughs> child brain had no real reason to suspect anything more sinister was at play behind closed doors. That is until a series of scandals that rocked not only the entertainment world but the spiritual community as well. A disruptive wave of rumors, a negative media attention, and poor Jeez. crisis management that ultimately ended with the oldest sibling, Josh, being found guilty of some of the most detestable crimes imaginable. Going from an Did he no ideal picture of American purity to now serving oh. a 12 year sentence in federal prison. Join me as we look back for what? You know, we'll get there when we get one there. of the most disturbing oh timelines in entertainment history and come through the many missteps that allowed a monster like Joshua Duggar to get away for so long. Wow. Maybe he's who they wrote the FNAF series about, you know what I mean? That's crazy. First, a word from today's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Being one of my absolute favorite companies to work with, Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Every month, Bespoke introduces members to a myriad of cool new products ranging from outdoor gear to barware, home and kitchen goods to clothing and more based on the results from this quick and easy preference. That's kind of cool. 
we're doing like Christmas with my um my mother in law, and we didn't we got like her husband's stuff, but like she she told us that he all wanted clothing, all clothing, and everybody got him clothing and pajamas, and now I feel like an asshole. It's all he got, so I'm looking for something to get him. Um, maybe I'll do something like this. I'll tell my wife about it. Quiz. Every box of awesome is worth around $70, but only costs you a fraction of the value. Plus, you'll even get to preview your box before it ships, giving you the opportunity to either keep it, swap it with a different box, or skip the month entirely free of charge. With Bespoke, you only pay for what you want. This month, I chose the Explore box, which includes this awesome Nomad Package backpack, the 25-ounce M8 water bottle, and an impressive LED headlamp. Not is there like an upcharge if you're morbidly obese? I mean, I'm just wondering. <laughs> Asking for a friend... And I'm my, I'm my best friend, by the way. <laughs> to mention this convenient and quality compact camp chair from the Parked Box. An insanely good deal you don't want to miss, especially with Christmas being right around the corner. Well, Get 20% off true. your first box of awesome when you click the link in the description box We're below. Or go to bespokepost.com slash jobbery20 and it's... Alright, alright, let's move on. Thanks, Anil. You may have one or two siblings, but could you imagine having 18 brothers and sisters? No. Well, that is part of the reason America became so intrigued with the show 19 Kids and Counting. Jim, Bob, and Michelle Duggar. Yes, the original Duggars are here to talk about I can't even count that high, bro. Ever-growing family and some big news that just came out for the family. Well, James Robert again? Jim Jesus Bob Christ. Duggar was born Put on July 18, 1965 pants, right? in Springdale, Arkansas. Raised by Jimmy and Mary Duggar with one older sibling, the Duggar family didn't start with much. Jimmy being described by his own family as a weak spiritual leader of the home, with Jim Bob attributing much of the- A weak spiritual- When described by his own family as a weak- he was not a good spiritual leader of the home. Okay. Spiritual wow. leader of the home, with Jim Bob attributing much of the family's early circumstances to his father's poor handling of finances. But by attending a private Christian school and becoming a regular at Sunday service, Jim Bob grew to possess strong religious values from a young age and was a heavy participant in church activities. Going door to door visiting potential church members, a friend of Jim Bob suggested he. Nothing, nothing says I want to go to church by getting a, a, a random person to come to my fucking door saying, you should come. Hang out with me more. And I'm like, you know, it's so interesting. I I want the opposite. Why are you up in my shit? You know what I mean? Just being honest with you. You know what I mean? Maybe if they showed up with like a pizza or something, I'd be a little more open to it. Just saying. I'm just throwing, I'm throwing like my ideas. I'm trying to help the church. Okay. And, hey, maybe they should do what Planet Fitness does. Free, free pizza Sunday. Huh? Maybe not Sunday. You got a lot of people there already. Pizza Tuesdays on a day where there's not a lot of people at mass. Maybe you say like, "Hey, you want a pizza?" I'm like, do, "Do do I? Do I?" You know, one time I was on. Uh, I think I was on Twitter. I I I, I saw a Pizza Hut or excuse me, a Domino's uh, advertisement, and it was obviously advertising Domino's, right? Duh. Duh. <laughs> And I remember I commented under their post. I said, "Is this sugar free?" You know, it was the it was a dessert pizza or something. And uh, instead of just saying no, you're a fucking idiot. They're like, "Oh, you could look at all the uh, you could look at all the <laughs> ingredients or whatever or your nutrition information online." It's like, come on, bro, you really think I thought it was sugar free? You know, maybe I did. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. We're sorry. Visit to a young girl by the name of Michelle Ruark, a cheerleader right. who had recently been converted to the faith. Coming oh, from a more conversion. secular background than Jim Bob, Michelle was born on September 13th, 1966, and was nice. given way more personal freedoms than any of her 19 children would have. Michelle's early life was much different from the one she'd live as an adult. She wore pants and tells a story of mowing her lawn in a bikini, as sort of an example of how secular she was, I guess. She even has a- What? Why would you mow the lawn in a bikini, you whore? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why would you mow the lawn in a bikini? That's just bizarre. Like, that just seems uncomfortable as well, though. Like, am I wrong about that? Like, what the fuck? Lesbian sister who she no longer associates with. No oh, idea why no. that may be. The Michelle once enjoyed <laughs> regular childhood activities and friendships around the time Jim Bob came knocking at her door. After leaving her house for the first time, Jim Bob said a prayer and later claimed it was love at first sight. While Michelle oh, didn't even remember the encounter. They were actually going on church visitation. And from the moment I saw her wow. and heard her talk, she was just such a sweet girl that yeah. at that point I prayed that she could be mine. I don't remember. Hey, I guess that I guess mowing the lawn in the bikini. <laughs> I guess that really uh that didn't work. It clearly oh, got the uh, it got him a uh, you know a little show. He's like, oh, I think I like this. Uh, I think I'm in love with this girl. I saw her boobies, but she doesn't remember it because he was just sitting there staring like what you know. Same way I used to stare at like my teacher when I was in the ninth grade uh, in English. I would just stare at her butt and I feel bad for her. I'm sorry.
Remember that first no, I've never heard of Josh Duggar. Okay, because the two would have another chance to get to know each other. When 17-year-old Michelle applied to work at a yogurt shop where uh, Mary Duggar was the manager, Jim Bob wow. was finally able to invite her to a high school banquet. And the two, I guess he uh, he's like, you want some of my yogurt? <laughs> After we get married, of course. Um discussed the Bible for hours that night. Before wow. long, they began dating and officially got married in July of 1984. For Early into their marriage, the Duggars were actually less traditional than you may think. Unlike today, the Duggars once watched TV and even used birth control at one point. Getting off the pill... <laughs> less traditional than you think. I wouldn't th associate those things with traditionalness. Yeah, you know, they used to watch TV. Wow. So untraditional. Like, what the fuck is that? That's just unhinged to me. They didn't watch TV. Is that really like a church thing? I mean, I guess TV might rot your mind a little bit. So maybe it's a good thing not to watch TV. Okay. Uh, crazy. You're crazy. Crazy girl, you know? Interesting. ...to have their first son, Joshua, before switching back onto the pill and getting pregnant again. Nice. This time resulting Puss. in a devastating miscarriage. Some of that Puss, and I ended up getting pregnant while on Damn. the pill. And That's we ended sad. up losing that baby. And at that point, we were so grieved about this. And we asked a doctor and he said, yeah, sometimes a pill will allow you to get pregnant, but then it can cause a miscarriage. And yeah. as we started studying the Bible... The that's sad. I mean, that doesn't mean that that's why they had the miscarriage, but that's sad. You know, so I, I, that sucks. The Bible says that children are a blessing and a gift from God and a reward from Him. We just really felt like that we need to give this area of our life to God. Attributing the tragedy to birth control, the Duggars swore off contraceptives altogether and began having baby after baby after okay. baby after baby. And another one, and another one, and Let's another go. one. And before we knew it, we had so many little ones and just two of us. And and I think we began to go, oh. Keep in your fucking pants, bro. How do you have 19 kids? It's nuts. Why? What do we get into? It got to where Michelle would be giving birth every 18 months on average, despite the plentiful health. Oh my god, bro. What the fuck? 18 months, dude? That's nuts. That's fucking unhinged. Why are you doing that to yourself? That's just that's just fucking crazy to me, bro. Um Jesus. Health concerns, Jim Bob and Michelle had decided the number of children they'd have would be left up to God himself. A philosophy in line with something called Quiverful, a theological movement that encourages women to bear as many children as they physically can. The name Quiverful okay. coming from Psalms 127, which reads, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. While it's more of a movement than a religion, those that follow Quiverful think of having Having kids is building God's army. They put heavy emphasis on traditional family values and reject much of the secular world. Women are never to disobey yeah, their male authority either. figures mm. and should always support them no matter what. Even Michelle herself has gone on the record saying women should always be available for sex even when they're tired. Well, the family themselves reject. I mean, you don't always have to do that, but my. My wife uh, kind of adheres to that ideology. Like, she's she she lets me kind of do whatever I want sometimes, if, even if. She, Sometimes she's just like, you know, you know, sometimes she's like, yeah, you can fuck me even if she's not necessarily in the mood. I don't usually do it, but sometimes, you know, fuck it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then sometimes she doesn't want to, she doesn't want me to waste the, uh, that juice. Because, you, know, you know, might as well, might as well put it to good use. <laughs> might as well put that, might as well put that juice to good use. Am I right, guy? So, okay. I get you. I get you, girl. I feel, I feel that. I can respect that. Obviously, there's a difference between not being in the mood versus like literally not wanting it. That's your choice, though. But okay, you know, you know. And by the way, you don't have to do that if you're a girl or anything. I'm just saying, like, I get it. I got you. I feel you. This label, and many still categorize the Duggars as quiverful anyway, considering their track record of historically supporting the Christian patriarchy group Vision Forum, attaching a link to quiverful.com on their website, and having cited the aforementioned Bible verse as to why they have so many children. But maybe the semantics don't matter as much, because all you need to know for now is that Jim Bob and Michelle were building a massive family under God. And after having 12 children by 2002, it was safe to say Michelle had her hands full in the house, especially with Jim Bro. Bob away working a full time job in politics wow. and michelle would have days where she would call me and say i'm just overwhelmed the house is that a when, that that aka fucking guys that's what it means when you're a religious person working in politics that means you're fucking dudes are you getting your you're putting your foot under the stalls and tapping it and getting your fucking rocks off dude you think she wore like a mask when they fought i'm just saying some of the gayest people ever are religious to cope some of them it's just some of them dude not all of them you know what i mean dude Maybe she's just like, yeah, you know what? I'll throw, I'll throw the old Jesus mask on. You can <laughs> rail a baby. <laughs> you never know, dude. Nothing wrong with that. Mask. I can't get anything done, and it was very overwhelming.
See, starting in 1999, Jim Bob was a proud member of the Arkansas House of Representatives, serving as vice chair of the Judiciary, House Corrections, and a Criminal Law Subcommittee, which is really not what we're here to focus on. I bring this up because in 2002, Jim Bob decided against running for re-election of his House seat to instead pursue a position in the United States Senate, where he and his many children would be famously photographed on their way into the polls on election day, when he lost to incumbent Tim Hutchinson. So, Jim Bob's political career kind of fell flat after that election, but that's okay, because thanks to that viral photo, a brand new opportunity was waiting right around the corner. Now this is James Duggar, and this is Justin. Say hi. And I'm Jim Bob, and this is my wife, Michelle. Welcome to the Duggar home. Catching the Welcome attention the of Duggar television home. producers, TLC's sister company, Discovery, reached out to the family. It was like crazy, like back in the day, people who were like held religious values, people were like, yeah, these are great people. Let's make a show about them. Nowadays, we're like, mm, what's going on with these guys? You know what I mean? We're all a little sussed out sometimes. You know, I'm just saying, it's crazy. Um, to shoot a 40-minute yeah. TV. <laughs> a representative, the man was the whole house. Yeah, that's very funny. That's a very funny joke. You fucking got me on that one, brother. Holy goodness, that was funny. The whole He's the whole house. Yeah, true. True that, man. True that, you, you silly goose. Because he had so many kids. <laughs> he's uh, 14 children and pregnant uh, again. Oh Airing in 2004, goodness. the documentary explored the unorthodox methods Jim, Bob, and Michelle used to raise so many kids under the same roof. Highlighting the specific day-to-day -day yeah. struggles the family faced. Things like long lines to the bathroom, how they prepared so much food, and oh, how- Oh, that's a fucking excellent point. I could never. Because even now- I have to duke so bad sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've got to go. We have two bathrooms in our house. Sometimes we need them both. Got to take so much duties. You know, it's like a fucking, the, the, the struggle's real, man. Got to take a dump. I got to take a dump, you know? How they delegate various chores to each child. As you'd expect, everything was extremely orderly. Keeping tabs on every child's tasks with this giant chart and making sure that everybody pulled their weight, so to speak, by implementing a buddy system. As Jim, Bob, and Michelle couldn't be buddy around system. every child all the time, the older siblings were assigned a younger buddy to look after. The system okay. was that immediately uh, after a baby was weaned off breastfeeding, sense. they were handed off to an older sibling who tended to all of their basic dietary, educational, and even hygiene needs. Making sure they got dressed and fed, as the family grew, the older Duggar girls took up most of these responsibilities, while the Duggar boys became occupied with work outside the house or okay. something. Eventually, I mean, I guess you gotta do have to do something like that. That's kind of traditional and normal, though, for you to do stuff like that. To, like, have, um... <clears throat> for you to have, like, you know, the kids kind of help out and, and taking care of the other kids. That, that makes sense. Why am I getting my ass pushed so hard? But okay. The family got so big that the oh, oldest daughters, God. Jill, Jana, Ginger, and Jessa, yes, they all have Jill, J names. I'm Jana, surprised I'm not in the family, too. Were given an entire group of young siblings to look after, placed into teams that were based on a rotation. Babies at being assigned to their group sometimes before they were even born, like in the case of their 19th yeah, baby, Josie. Being born prematurely, she was Josie passed along to Jana once her medical cats. issues had mostly stabilized, which meant Jana happened to be watching over her during one of her apparent seizures. With their parents out of town, Jana and her grandmother were left frantically trying to get through to paramedics, all while the camera crew stood by and filmed everything. This could have well been Josie's last moments on Earth. And TLC chose to get up close shots of Jana panicking, unsure of how to appropriately navigate a life or death situation. A traumatizing moment only amplified by the presence of a camera crew. Luckily, Josie was finally able to get help, but needless to say, this is all a lot of pressure to put on one family member who isn't certified in dealing with such medical emergencies. It's this kind of built-in exploitation on top of an already questionable buddy system that's garnered at plenty of rightful criticism online, with some pointing out the negative implications of siblings being required to parent each other through a process commonly known as parentification. Now, I mean, honestly, like, I, I don't think that's a big of a deal. That's somewhat normal. That's pretty historically normal of, like, you know, having your, basically having some of the kids help take care of them. Um, I wouldn't call that some fucking form of abuse, honestly. Because that's, like, normal. Like, that's kind of like a historical thing that people kind of just did. Um, so, okay. I am by no means an expert on the subject, but certified psychotherapists like Nikki Atkins have gone into detail explaining the various downsides and long-term effects of assigning adult responsibilities what? to children. It's very common for children who were parentified to grow up and become adults and then realize that there's a lot of identity development that didn't happen. To have this moment of, like, oh, sure. I don't really have an identity of my own and like I don't really know what I like or what I'm interested in. I never got the chance to explore those things because I was so busy being a surrogate parent to somebody else. I think they're Yeah, I mean I get it. Listen, nothing not everything's ideal. I just wouldn't call it like 
I wish wouldn't call it like um we did have a nice holiday. Thank you so much. I just wouldn't call it um like bad parenting or something. It's pretty a historical idea that people do that. They have like their like my mother, she helped, she was the oldest girl. She helped basically raise the people in when she was growing up as well. Um and she has very strong values that was like a, able to help her uh, very strong family uh, values that was able to help like raise me even though my father left us. Um you know what I mean? Like it's not always a bad. There's take the good with the bad. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah, it might it might make it difficult for you to have your own identity because you were pushed into like uh having to do like having more work to to, to do as a younger person. But then on the other hand, you kind of learn how to raise kids earlier on, um, and you have a better work ethic. So there's there's an ebb and flow. Not everything is perfect. You know what I mean? I don't think that it's an inherently bad thing. Like yeah, there could be dangers to it. Doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. You know, I think that people don't understand that. You know, no, th th there's nothing is ever perfect. So, really, is again increased odds for these kids to end up with a disadvantage in terms of developing their own identity and having the opportunity to really explore, Maybe. like, who am I as an individual? As far as education goes, the Duggars homeschool each and every one of their kids under what's known as the Advanced Training Institute, or ATI. Established by Bill Gothard in 1984, the ATI is an offshoot of the Institute of Basic Life Principles, or IBLP, which, trust me, we'll definitely be getting into a little bit later. All you need to know for now is that the ATI is basically a homeschooling curriculum that uses random cherry-picked Bible verses to teach reading, writing, and math, which are all included in these helpful little pamphlets called wisdom booklets. These booklets that you can freely access yourself online contain teachings on how to dress modestly, how to style your hair, the sinful act of winking at people. Hey, sounds like a Vogue magazine. <laughs> Let's be real. And of course, one even attempts to explain why God allows sexual assault to happen by blaming the victim. To God. Sounds like a Vogue magazine, am I right? What the fuck? Um, wow. Why did God let it happen? What the fuck? Holy moly. Um, what? The parts of our being. Oh, let me maximize this. Okay, cool. Spirit, blah, blah, blah. Which part is most... Con con Counseling sexual abuse. Which part is most important? Which is the most important? Which is least important? What did offender damage? What parts do we damage with bitterness and guilt? Okay. I mean, okay. Why did God let it happen? I mean, he, I mean that's a good question. Why does God let people get raped? Uh, immodest dress. Indecent exposure. Being out from protection from our parents. Being with evil friends? Question mark. Okay. Uh, is there any guilt for disobedience for not reporting it? Failing to report it allows others to be abused. Uh, I guess that could be true. Clear guilt by confessing it to God. Uh, explain the potential of a moral vaccination and a test of genuine love by casting out fear for marriage. If abuse was not a f at fault, God compensated physical abuse with spiritual power. What is being mighty in spirit, greater faith, spiritual uh, discoverment, genuine love, wisdom and understanding, creativity, energy, enthusiasm? Example, Daniel, extreme abuse, eunuch, uh, wisdom, understanding. If you had to choose, no physical abuse or mighty in spirit, what would you choose? Reason for bitterness, he damaged your body. Important step, dedicate your body to God. Prayer to dedicate your body to God. Place yourself in on his altar to serve him for... Uh, Forgive offender, turn to God for his discipline to ask God pardon. So this is pretty fucked, but if I'm looking at this, this is like a cope. Some of this is like, oh, if you're sexually abused, is it positive to keep, uh, to hold on to resentment? And like, it makes sense from a, that person's thing. It's like, yeah, that you, of course you're going to resent them because they fucking, you know, they're horrible people that sexually abuse you. But there, I think that the ideology here is like, if you can move past what happened and you don't maintain that bitterness, you can move on from your, 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 your trauma. You know, I'm being very generous in the, in the, you know, in the interpretation, but I get that kind of the idea of like, what, how did you let it happen? I wouldn't say let it happen. Like, obviously there are places that you can go. Like if you go to like a club scene, unfortunately there's a guy might be a higher chance. I would say of getting sexually assaulted. doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to go there. It's the sexual assaulters problem when they do it. It's their fault. Um, but I mean, just the fundamentally being like, well, how are you dressed is obviously really fucked because men should be able to, it's mostly men who sexually assault people and should be able to keep their shit 
is, oh, well, she had a dress. I could see her butt a little bit, so I, it was okay to rape her. You know, that's obviously wrong. Um, the one part about, like, reporting it is a positive thing. Like, you should report it or other people could. I mean, it is. It's just very, it could be very triggering to report it. But uh, very, very bizarre. Very bizarre. Um, okay. That's fucking crazy. To explain why God um, allows sexual assault to happen by blaming and, and- the... And it's not really, I would, it's not really God allowing it. It's one of those things where people will ask, well, how come God let me get sexually assaulted? And because like, how do you, how do you explain God letting you get raped? And the general conserv or excuse me, the religious perspective is like, well, uh, God, uh, you know, gave you a struggle for you to overcome because there's no other explanation. It's like, God gives us different trials. God gives his most difficult fights to his strongest warriors. You ever hear that before? Uh, it's a cope meme. <laughs> That's really what it is. It's a cope, you know? Why was it? Why was uh Why did my child die after it was born? Oh, God gives his uh, you know most. God wanted it to happen. Why? Why would He want that to happen for me? Because He wants you to be a stronger person spiritually. What other? Uh, that's what the answer. What other answer could you possibly give? You know, the victim to Gothard assault happens as a result of immodest dress, indecent exposure, being away from um, parents, or being with evil friends. Could. These educational principles are crucial in understanding. God the- did an oopsie. You know, I just made a little a little goof. He made a little silly Billy. Duggar's traditional lifestyle. We don't want to stir up desires, different things that um, cannot be righteously fulfilled. Where the girls don't wear pants. So don't shower, bro. Don't shower. You know, don't shower. Don't go out of the house. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ. Well, that's something, man. That's just like unfortunate. I wonder how much like they they internalize it being their fault then because of that teach. Whatever. Okay. And are encouraged yeah, to keep their hair plan. long for the like Lord. Even the men are required to dress modestly with the entire family wearing pants to a marathon. You could pick out our boys pretty quick because yeah. our boys were I know I got to wear pants because sometimes those girls look at the calves and they're like, oh my God, they start soaking the floor. Then people start tripping and getting hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I have some pretty sexy calves and feet. You know what I mean, dude? So it's pretty crazy. It's in pants. And everybody else had shorts on. The family doesn't watch TV. I would which wear is jeans ironic because line. duh. And as musical as they are, provocative dancing is something to be cautious about. We try not to shake True. body parts around. There is no alcohol in the Duggar household. Tattoos and piercings are off limits. And as you can imagine, pre-marital sex is I mean that makes sense. Tattoos are a waste of money, but I do want to get another one, so it's heavily frowned upon. Just like front hugging and kissing, which are reserved for when you tie the knot. Did you? You can't front hug? Wait, can you back hug? I feel like that's more that's a little more intense. Um, as a Christian, I think it's okay to believe in something and ask questions. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you. I understand. Um, but that is like the logic there. This is heavily frowned upon. Just like front hugging and kissing, which are reserved for when you tie the knot. Did you say at some point that you would practiced with your hand? So I was thinking, you know what? I wonder what it feels yeah. like. So I practiced on my hand. I think practicing on my hand was just to see what it felt like. The Duggars also don't exactly- Sorry, that guy just kind of seemed a little gay, you know? He was a little feminine. Hey, nothing wrong with it. Oh, sorry. Yeah date they <laughs> which means all dates are accompanied by a chaperone sometimes being a much a younger sibling the boyfriend must always get permission from the girl's that's father weird. before making things official which isn't totally out of the ordinary for some fa- now that's pretty ordinary um it's like a sign of respect but obviously there's like that historical thing of where it's like oh so i have to ask permission blah 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 you know what i mean um, so people get like frustrated by it, so I get that. But families. But what is a little more unusual is Jim Bob sending 50-page <clears throat> questionnaires to his daughter's potential boyfriends. It's on the 45-page application. <laughs> page 27, section B. You think he's joking? <laughs> Everybody did the, the 30 page questionnaires. No, I'm, I'm sorry, wait a second. Jim Bob made you guys fill out questionnaires he, that he is were. not kidding, yes. Yes, yes they did. Yeah. Well. I got sent a 50 page questionnaire. I sent it back at 105 pages. These strict guidelines are used to promote a higher standard for romantic relationships, especially. Really went above and beyond on that one, okay. <laughs> when it comes to sex, which the Duggars have always spoken pretty candidly about, with some of the daughters even alluding to the night their brother was about to have it during his wedding. He's gonna have love marks yeah. all over him. But he won't mind. <laughs> In a particularly strange and uncomfortable moment, one of their non-religious cousins, Amy, even attempts to teach Josh how to kiss just hours ahead of his honeymoon. It's your first kiss, so like, um, I need to give you some pointers. Oh yeah. 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 Since I've kissed a couple. I think I've I think I've seen this uh, I've seen this one before. Oh, let me teach you how to kiss, big brother. I've seen that before. I've seen that one. 
Okay. It was all weird when it first aired, and it's especially weird now, knowing the full context of Josh's unsavory history. But for TV networks, the weirdness made for great entertainment. So Discovery gave the Duggars three more specials throughout 2006. Before long, they had become quite the media darlings, winning over the hearts of religious and secular audiences with their lovable, wholesome image. To the point where they were even invited on the Oprah Winfrey show for an interview wow. late that year. An invitation that was swiftly rescinded once Oprah received an anonymous tip from a woman alluding to a darker side of the Duggar family iceberg. Ooh, Three shit. times he told Jim Bob Duggar what he'd done. His dad brought him in and he was also there with the church elder. And it didn't just happen once. That's according to a police report obtained by In Touch magazine. Jesus according to a 2006 police report. I wonder if the In Touch magazine is alluding to uh, somebody getting touched in an inappropriate way. Report published by In Touch magazine nine years later, Oprah Winfrey canceled an appearance with the Duggar family after a 61-year-old woman reached out to Harpo Studios warning producers of wow. the eldest son Joshua and his then rumored track record of abuse within the family's own home. The studio's Jesus. response was to contact the local authorities. I mean, the first thing I'm getting here is like how much of this abuse is the fault of the fa mother and father? You know, if you have this whole like, I, I don't know, like... Uh, how much that's like whatever this kid did how much of it is the fault of like these really bizarre power dynamics happening and like the fact that they aren't really parenting you know what i mean like you have a young person that's basically parenting their these kids instead of like the actual parents parenting and it just gets so fucked you know, it's fucking crazy. Who opened up an investigation, interviewing several family members that December. While Jim Bob did everything he could to protect his son from questioning, Springdale police still conducted interviews with several other key family members. The timeline, as documented by authorities, began in March 2002, where the police report indicates that Jim Bob, or James as written in the document, was first approached by one of his daughters who accused Josh of touching her inappropriately while she slept. An accusation that, as the report outlines, Jim Bob did nothing about. Not until several months later, when Josh came forward himself and confessed to his father what he had done, Jesus. confirming the allegation made by his younger sister. It was here that Jim Bob was said to have disciplined Josh on his own terms. What that means exactly, I'm not sure. But it's important to note that he still refused to contact the police or anyone outside of the family for that matter. As far as we know, Jim Bob remained dedicated to keeping this a family secret at all costs, even if it meant Josh's behavior would continue, which it did. As the report goes on to state that Jim Bob was made aware of several more incidents of Josh fondling a young victim as he read to her on his lap. The police report confirming four of Josh's five victims to be his little sisters who had an age range of 11 to 5 years old at the time of the incidents. A fifth victim Jesus was understood Christ. to be a family friend, also underage at the time and younger than Joshua, who was around 14 when this all took place. By March 2003, Jim Bob finally decided to take action by going to the church. And after conferring with the elders, it was determined Josh needed some kind of treatment program. It was only then that Josh was sent to a Christian-based facility, which included what the report described as a hard physical work and counseling, although Michelle would later admit to police that Josh had not seen an actual counselor. As opposed to seeking genuine punishment or rehabilitation for their son, Jim Bob and Michelle decided to send Josh away with, quote, a family friend who was in the home remodeling business. Which, when I think of a counseling program, my mind doesn't typically jump to things like carpentry. See, the Duggars have long been tied to a religious organization known as the Institute in Basic Life Principles, commonly abbreviated as the IBLP, with a history of isolating its members from the outside world, threats of severe punishment, and authoritarian in control, the IBLP has been labeled a cult by other Christian denominations and even former members, being spearheaded by Minister Bill Gothard, who served for many decades until being forced to step down in 2014 after he was accused of sexually assaulting and harassing at least 34 women and working to Jesus cover up Christ. the systemic abuse of children within the organization. While the IBLP promotes rigid familial roles, a patriarchal system, and shielding children from anything unholy, many have criticized the organization for not accurately teaching things like sex education in its mandatory homeschooling curriculum, ATI. One former student, John Cornish, alleging, I remember that Gothard was basically telling us that sexual abuse wasn't all that terrible because it only affected one's body and not the more important parts of our being, soul and spirit. This warped Just, message has left- I mean, like, that's not even true. I mean, like, if, fucking, I mean, like, if you could, like, really, uh, your fucking soul broken down by getting sexually abused, that's fucking insane. But, yeah. Some teens and children, without an understanding of what sexual assault is, perpetuating a climate of vulnerability that the leading figures have been known to take advantage of. 
of. And as Critish continued, for the thousands of families in the ATI program, Gothard would be the first place they would turn, so which is exactly what Jim Bob did. Bill Gothard himself even recalling speaking with Jim Bob and Michelle personally after the incidents took place. He says he was the one who suggested Josh be sent to a godly mentor. So when Josh arrived at the Little Rock Salvation Facility, a now defunct IBLP training center, he was reportedly made to help renovate an old VA hospital the IBLP had recently acquired. In addition to carrying out laboring tasks, he was also assigned one-on-one -on -one faith based counseling to cleanse him of any sex related impulses in relation to what exactly yeah so that i mean uh, i mean listen I, I i must i guess the family thought that this would be a way to actually help but like these people aren't like psychologists in any capacity they're not going to be able to actually like uh, deal with this situation at all i mean if you really wanted to try to tackle this issue of like pedophilia probably um and i'll say pro probably because it's such a fucked up dynamic it's probably more than just that it's like that mixed with like this weird power dynamic that you've let this this kid engage in of doing whatever he wants, and it's so many. If you want to deal with all this fucked up shit, like you have to go to a real therapist. Um, but of course, you're just going to like the church, and like all you can really do is pray it away, and that's not going to work. Um, you have to like disconnect that kid from these fucking kids. That's what you need to do. Because holy Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Josh was taught there. Gothard stated the endocrine system consists of about 16 or 17 or so glands throughout our body and they are affected by our sexual drive. Lust can have a positive or a negative effect on the body depending on what it's for. God designed us to have an attraction to the opposite sex for marriage, but whoremongers will be damaged by their own system. Like the ATI, the lessons here prioritized the Bible while discouraging science, the arts, or philosophy, according to former student Micah Murray, who was raised by IBLP teachings from 1st to 12th grade. Gothard had painted a a world that was out to destroy families and then humbly volunteered to show us the way to safety, he claimed. Before becoming disillusioned by the cult-like tendencies Gothard espoused, Murray was fairly involved at the Indianapolis Training Center, describing having to wear suit jackets at dinner every night, not being allowed to talk to girls, and having to get a request form signed in order to go out and get fast food. Calling the IBLP a disaster for family- Hey, I could use that. <laughs> Maybe it would uh, deal with some of my- uh... You know, a little too much of my over fast food consumption. Am I right, guys? <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? It's Murray recalled a depression, is marriage is falling apart, and it's sexual molestation occurring throughout the organization. While Murray wasn't too surprised when the Duggar incident came to light, Gothard maintains the backlash demonstrates an attack crazy. on Christianity, and the critics are merely out to discredit and destroy the religion as a whole. But how did any of this even land in Oprah's inbox to begin with? Believe me, there's a lot of stuff that was confessed that night that hasn't even been out in public anywhere. In addition to confiding in church elders, Jim Bob and Michelle also shared Josh's confession with some close family friends, Jim and Bobby Holt, okay. two names that I'm sure won't make this story any more confusing. The Holtz knew the Duggars through church and had a daughter, Kaylee, around the same age as Josh, who were said to have been courting at one point, their parents even expecting them to get married one day. All of that changed, though, when the Holtz learned of Josh's activities, cutting off the relationship with the family right then, as Bobby would later testify in court. At the time, Josh's abuse didn't reach others within the church, though, until Kaylee wrote a private letter to her favorite author, detailing what she had overheard from Jim, Bob, and Michelle. Although she didn't end up mailing the letter, she did end up placing it in a book that was later lent out to a fellow church member. And that is how everything leaked. The information causing a divide within the congregation, some church members took the Duggar's side, while others were appalled at what they considered to be irresponsible handling of yeah, a no serious shit. crime. Though it's worth noting- That sounds a little more reasonable. <laughs> ...that Jim Bob did go to police after Josh returned from his little three-month IBLP vacation, after Joseph T. Hutchins gave Josh a, quote, very stern talk in 2005, he refused to press charges, letting Josh off the hook easy, as long as he promised to be good, I guess. Which we know. I mean, like, this is like a very church thing. Like, oh, I made a mistake. And, like, in the church area, like, listen, the way that they handle it was irresponsibly. But so far, it's like, it's pretty in line with the way that, like, like church ideology is like, oh, you, what you do is horrible, but you confessed your sin and you did this and then you did that. And, and I guess it was once they felt like the church couldn't actually do something that they decided to report it. They should have reported it in the first place. Because, again, like, the church has no dick about shit when it comes to fucking shit like this. Um, but I mean, this is just a, like a profound lack of intelligence when it comes to situations like this, which is fucked. Oh, it's fucking crazy. You know how that ended. To make matters worse, by 2006, the statute of limitations in Arkansas had already expired, supposedly. And Josh was let off the hook yet again. Oh, what's that? You're wondering what happened to the state trooper? Yeah, he was arrested and convicted of possessing child porn himself. Sentenced to 50. <laughs> Christ, oh my God.
56 years in jail for maybe he was just holding it for josh <laughs> jesus fuck bro very similar charges josh would later face so that's kind of what we're dealing with here back in the early to mid 2000s though rumors of josh's behavior were starting to reach more people first members of the church then oprah then surfacing on early discussion forums online all while the duggars were given season after season of their own show by tlc growing their brand and becoming a prominent staple in the spiritual landscape people close enough to the family definitely knew of a secret yet josh's past remained nothing more than hearsay until 2015 when the Duggar family empire shattered. I'm Josh Duggar, the oldest of 19 kids in county, and uh, welcome to Duggar home. Through an FOIA request in 2015, In Touch magazine managed to obtain the redacted 2006 police report that confirmed the rumors that had been floating around for years, prompting everyone in Josh's proximity to swiftly enter damage control mode, including the network. TLC pulling its top-rated show from the airwaves, which eventually led to a permanent cancellation by summer 2015. The Duggars released a statement that day, which read, "With God." I'm surprised personally that like not even the cameras were able to pick up on what was going on. Like, did they not know at all? I mean, aren't they pretty close? Don't they like kind of intimately hang out with them in some capacity? Like, I feel like they would maybe figure it out. No, maybe it's not true. But I'm like, damn. God's grace and help, Josh, our daughters, and our entire family overcame a terrible situation, found healing, and a way forward. We are so pleased with the wonderful adults they have all become. It's important to stop here and note that the family's statements addressing what happened were all predicated on the assumption that Joshua was now a changed man, someone who sought forgiveness from God and had moved on to become a better person. In a statement of his own, he wrote, My parents took several steps to help me address the situation. We spoke with the authorities where I confessed my wrongdoing, and my parents arranged for me and those of affected by my actions to receive it counseling. At the time, he claimed to have been forgiven by Christ and those he had wronged. Yeah, this makes sense to me. Um... Just give me like a second. Okay, so he seemed to be uh, when he started. He was when he was fourteen and fifteen. So it seems like he started molesting his younger sisters when he was fourteen, and they were between the ages of five and eleven. Um. I'm trying to remember what the qualifier for pedophilia is. Um. I don't remember if it, it's. I think I remember reading a DSM five breakdown on it and i think i'm trying to confirm this that it is like a you it's a pedophile is somebody who's 16 years or older who's attracted to a child who's five years younger than him than them or more and the reason why this is like generally relevant and, and I, I could be misquoting it is because to an extent you could potentially attribute this issue and it doesn't matter why it's happening Unless, well, except for the fact that you want to treat it correctly, but you attribute this issue to a behavioral issue rather than necessarily the attracting to children. So, a fifteen-year-old blessing their young, so fourteen-year-old, excuse me, blessing their younger siblings, it could be a behavioral. It's a deep behavioral problem that's incredibly problematic and disgusting, regardless. But from one, from like a treatment perspective, um, it's like, why is it happening? Is it happening because they have attraction to younger children, or is it happening because like, um. I mean, what they were saying before, where uh, the young ki the, the kids who are forced to be parents earlier lose part of their identity, maybe, and they start being attracted to kids because they felt like they lost it on their childhood. Or is it like an abuse of power dynamic? There's so many different things. A fucking religious uh, spiritual healer or whatever couldn't deal with this complex problem that the parents would have potentially crafted through this means. Um and then, of course, because it went untreated, it turned obviously into pedophilia. I mean, like at that point, it is literally, you know. Um, but this is something that could have been dealt with if they had dealt with this properly. It's fuck, which I mean, actual therapists and disconnecting this kid from even being able to be in these positions of power anymore. Because how the fuck, like, let's say, like, how are you going to be like, yeah, 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 we're just going to keep him in this role of taking care of the kids? Um, but you can't do that anymore even if you wanted to treat him. But again, a spiritual fucking healer wouldn't be able to do that. I could be wrong about my definition of pedophilia. I'm, I'm trying to find the specifics. Um, but that's what I'm, I believe I remember reading that back then. Um, 
because it's possible that like he has his own weird trauma that's associated with this it's, it's yeah okay so it's right here uh, according to the DSM-5, a person uh, must be at least 16 years old and at least five years older than the prepubescent child for the attraction to be diagnosed as a pedophilic disorder. So if he's 14 and he's molesting kids between, what was it, 5 and 11, um, that doesn't hit the qualification. That doesn't mean that it's not like, it, what, what that means is that it could have been a different behavioral issue that manifests itself now into pedophilia because it's an ongoing issue. But with actual decent medical intervention or, or uh, therapeutic intervention could have been prevented but uh, guess what? It wasn't, so. Emphasizing how thankful he was for God's grace, mercy, and redemption. His wife, Anna, went on to add that Josh's counseling changed his life and that he continued to do as he was taught, justifying her decision to marry Josh despite knowing of his past on account of him being someone who had gone down a wrong path and had humbled himself before God and those whom he had offended. Someone who had received the help needed wow. to change the direction of his life. With the power of hindsight, of course, you and I can obviously see the unfortunate aging of these statements. But at the time, oh. his healing was a sentiment being echoed not just by him and his wife but even jim bob and michelle i feel like like you really there's really nothing you could do at that point because they've already gone like so far down the incorrect path of like actually treating this issue that this this person probably like had like inc profoundly long-term problems at this point who sat down with megan kelly for an exclusive interview on her former fox news show in june 2015 in a response so bad it was described as a shocking and horrifying spectacle did you ever worry that the treatment didn't work, especially with so many young children in the house. Sharing nervous glances throughout the 40-minute ordeal, Jim Bob and Michelle attempt to reassure audience members that these incidents were in the past and that everything was handled in the most responsible way possible. But this line of defense could only go so far, with Megyn Kelly asking even the most surface-level questions. What would make you launch a reality TV show about your family? given this past. All this had been taken care of five years before. We had nothing to hide. We had taken care of all that years before. Oh, we had no fear did. because we hadn't, we, everything was taken care of. And that was a suit, uh, that was a, that was actually a sealed juvenile record. We had all resolved it, it had been forgiven, we moved on with life. It doesn't take long to see that most of their support and empathy lies with their son, rather than their daughters who had been abused. In fact, the entire yep. interview reeks of Josh sympathy. But he was still, he was still a kid, he was still a juvenile. He wasn't an adult. There was a couple more times that he came and told us what he had done. This was not, uh, rape or anything like that. This was like touching somebody over their clothes. Mm -hmm. There were a couple incidents where he touched them under their clothes, but it was like, a few seconds. Jim Bob had somehow managed to Well, it's still very wrong, obviously. I mean, there is a pretty significant downplay, but, you know, but again, this seems like a huge issue with the, with the family dealt with it, you know? To downplay hey, Josh's behavior, claiming it. He said he was just curious about girls, and that he had gone in and just basically touched them over their clothes while they were sleeping. Before that part might be true. Like, okay, so the reason, what I'm saying, like, because of the what it seems like teaching of incredible sexual um, repression, that could also be a factor. Because, like, it's gross to think about, but, like, kids tend to experiment with other kids sexually more often than people know, usually within their own age range. It's not actual super young kids. And, again, that's, like, another thing is that when, kid gets curious, when a kid gets curious about sex, let's say they're 14 years old, if they don't have the proper sexual education, uh, then they start to experiment with, like, you know, fucking. And they're only dealing with their family. All of a sudden, they're experimenting with, like, their family, and it gets really disgusting, and it becomes, like, a huge problem. There's so many different instances that were set up here. Um, of like, you know, it's, it's a fucking, I mean, the parents effectively set them up for like very, um, like a pipeline of sexual, um, repression and inappropriate sexual activity. It's fucking crazy. Continuing, the first thing was to protect the girls. But keep in mind, it took three separate incidents for Jim Bob and Michelle to actually do anything. And even that was just sending him to a Christian getaway camp run by this creep. And this, this, is not, this is not like a licensed therapist. It's somebody, a, a Christian-based... Christian-based, but yeah, I tell you what. Treatment facility. It really had a huge impact on his life. Really not when Megan asked okay. why police weren't involved from the start, Jim Bob responded, As parents, you're not mandatory reporters. The law allows for parents to do what they think is best for their child. Continuing that as long as long as he was right with God, we felt like the last jurisdiction of who he needed to make things right with was the law. To a lot of people, it really seemed like they were willing to do anything to put the comfort and security of Josh over their other children getting the justice they deserved. Some of the other steps taken by the Duggars seemed to involve not letting the boys babysit alone or not allowing kids to play hide and seek by themselves, which is just sad. Maybe just not letting the kid be around other kids. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. It doesn't really indicate to me that Jim, Bob, or Michelle ever had a ton of confidence that their son had truly been fixed. The parents had continued to downplay Josh's activity by specifying his victims were too young to understand or even remember what happened. Michelle remarking, he knew that it was wrong, but they weren't even aware. To them, they didn't probably even understand that it was an improper touch. Which Well, that's probably not true. Um, like a lot of kids are, can be very perceptive. They probably didn't understand like the exactly what was going on, but they, they, it's probably not true that they knew that. Um, even if there is some level of truth, the kid's not being traumatized by this, which is what the claim that they're making, which I don't know if it's entirely true. It doesn't matter because this, uh, it, apparently this has set this up the, 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 the stage for more sexual exploitation of other people, including this guy's own kid. If he had a kid like this is fucked. Um, Jesus. I don't know. It doesn't exactly sound as good as you think it does. You were in the news for making a robocall that suggested transgender people might want to go into the bathrooms of locker rooms of girls and that they may be child molesters. Michelle is eventually asked about a particular... Well, I guess their kid is transgender then. They're not. That's obviously just like homophobia, but... Um, it's funny how you're going to pretend to be it's 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 very funny how they're like so they downplay the actual like sexual abuse that their son has engaged in because of the bad landscape that they set up for um but then like they'll blame they'll they'll pretend that like trans people are going to like go and like fucking rape your kids but like you're not you don't care about molestation clearly because you're allowing it to happen so it's a fucking virtue signal um, it really goes to show you that people with that argument usually don't have quite a, much of a foundation for that argument. Um, and like, you know, oh, somebody that's not trans might go in the bathroom and abuse this. Maybe, maybe we blame that on the, maybe we blame it on the people who are weaponizing trans identity who aren't trans, you know what I mean? <laughs> call she recently made calling trans women pedophiles for wanting to access women's oh restrooms gosh. and locker rooms. I'll play it here, but just know there is a trigger warning for hateful language. Hello, this is Michelle Dever. I'm calling to inform you of some shocking news that will affect the safety of Northwest Arkansas women and children. The Fayetteville City Council is voting on an ordinance this Tuesday night that would allow men, yes, I said men, to use women's and girls' restrooms, locker rooms, showers, Jesus sleeping Christ. areas, and other areas that are designated for females only. I don't believe the citizens of Fayetteville would want males with past child predator convictions that claim they are female to have a legal right to enter private areas reserved for women and girls. I doubt that Fayetteville parents would stand for a law that would endanger their daughters or allow them to be traumatized by a man joining them in their private space. We should never Incredible. place the preference of an adult over the safety and innocence of a child. Oh. Parents, who do you... Megan accurately pinpoints the optics of this message when considering the predatory past of her own son that she herself had tried to hide, which just leads to a bizarre transphobic tirade from Michelle that gets interrupted by her Very husband much. giving us the Webster's definition of a pedophile. I think that protecting young girls and not allowing young men and men in general to go into a girl's locker room is just common sense. But this, this is different because you injected child molestation into it. I think you actually said pedophile in that, and actually a pedophile is a, an adult that preys on children. Joshua was actually 14 and just turned 15 when he did what he did. And I think the legal definition is 16 and up for being an adult preying on a child. So he, so he was a child preying on a child. Forget the fact that one... No, no, he's not wrong, but that doesn't make... So what he's saying is, well, technically, my, my kid may not have been a pedophile. Okay, so then there's still drastic and massive behavioral issues, mostly based on the way that you parented your kid as to why they're abusing... He's abusing his sisters. Like, I... That doesn't make it better because he doesn't fit the DSM-5 legal definition of like what a pedophile is. It means that there's still an underlying issue that's that hasn't been addressed because of the significant power dynamic. Like what? Well, it's fucking incredible. One of his victims had an age in the single digits, I guess. Let's argue about the semantics of the word pedophile instead. That'll get people on our side and sure won't weird anybody out. Within minutes, Michelle and Jim Bob emphasize there being an agenda against their family, an attack they believe to be motivated by religious and political reasons. Though I'd say these so-called sure. attacks are generally due to the fact that for over 10 years, Jim Bob, Michelle, and even Josh had repeatedly posited themselves as the perfect religious family. When you place yourself on that kind of moral pedestal, people develop expectations. And when the facade starts to crack, people will begin to doubt everything. How much of it was a lie? Jim Bob and Michelle know there isn't much they can do to change this, so they instead take the defensive, doing all they can to paint themselves as victims of a smear campaign driven by a secular liberal media, looking to misinterpret their values for the sake of personal gain. The Duggar parents clearly want justice to be served, just maybe not when it means consequences for Josh. Our family is just trying to regroup from these attacks. And when you're in every newspaper and everything throughout the world, I mean, it's been an unprecedented attack on our family. Okay. And, and it was actually 
this information was released illegally. Another part of the Duggars' defense at this time had yeah. to do with... Well, I am really worried about the illegality of the releasing of uh, information as it pertains to your kids sexually abusing like what the fuck why would i care if it was even released even if that's true who cares your fucking kids uh you didn't you didn't pr correctly address this issue and it led to this issue being exacerbated so whether or not the police report in question was released illegally michelle even insisting her daughters were more victimized by the publication of these documents than josh's own actions it's possible i mean like again they're just learning damage control but like some of that is kind of possible like maybe um only in the capacity that like it, it can be very traumatic to have your trauma being put on full display. In part, is true. Um, that obviously doesn't make it okay. But that is there is a there is an argument to be made there. Um, I'm not sure I'd be the one to make it, but uh, you know the reality is is that the parents didn't seem to deal with this the correct way. Um, so people obviously you know stepped in, but that breaks my heart for my girls because I think this is such a horrible. They've been victimized more by what has happened in these last couple of weeks than they were 12 years ago because they honestly they didn't even understand or know that anything had happened until after the fact when they were sh told about it. The Duggars were still. I mean, again, maybe part of that's true, but your failure to address this correctly is the bigger problem, and I don't think that they genuinely mean this when they say that. It's more of just like, oh, how can we deflect criticism? Uh, more than anything else. I think that's a bigger problem there. Still determined to prove that the information came out in bad faith. And there's definitely a point there to be made, as no victim should ever be forced to share their story because of a tabloid yeah. leak. Yeah, Jill exactly. and Jessa having their trauma aired out on such a public platform with no warning is entirely unfair. But True. it also seemed like Jim Bob and Michelle were more concerned over the leak itself happening than the actual information within the leak. A couple of teasing legal action just in the interview with Megan. Any chance of you suing her or the city for this disclosure? Uh, we're talking to some attorneys about that right now, and we'll see. It's also worth noting here that the four affected Jesus daughters Christ. did go ahead and sue both Springdale and Washington County officials in 2017, in a case that was dismissed by a judge earlier this year after ruling the sisters had, quote, not presented any direct proof or reasonable inference that officials had revealed private facts about the victims. Since the documents published in touch redacted the relevant names and information of any minors, the release was legally protected by the Freedom of Information Act. Though that's not to say they were okay. wrong in feeling violated. Jessa and Jill still deserve to have their day in court as they went on to do their own interview with Megan Kelly separate from the parents. They don't have a right to do this. This isn't we're victims. They can't do this to us. <laughs> And yet they did. And they did. Trying to put myself in their shoes, I can't imagine what it must have been like to relive their trauma on a national stage without any foresight or preparation. By portraying yep. these events from their own perspective, they also provide a glimpse into how the Duggar parents have treated their daughter's abuse from the beginning. That it was all nothing more serious than innocent curiosity, and that boys will be boys. It's unfortunate to think this mindset is drilled into kids' heads at such an early age. It downplays what victims go through and prevents Josh from actually getting what he deserves. While not not addressing the problem and only keeping the cycle of abuse going. Jill later blaming her brother for allowing his victims to defend him while hiding even more sex-related secrets from the family. Which leads us into the next Duggar scandal as things weren't about to get any easier for Josh. So was that the extent of what this kid did wrong? Or to try the Doug oh there's a trial there has to be more than just that. Holy fuck. By August 20 Cuz like I'm assuming that like this leads on to even more issues. Like this possible in this inappropriate shit that happened when he was 14 that could have potentially been stopped by going to an actual like behavioral psychologist, like a child behavioral psychologist, not some fucking religious person, would be exacerbated to him like getting to a point of potentially abusing kids. That's what I would assume is happening. Um, a potential issue of non-pedophilia turning into pedophilia because the behavioral problem isn't solved. Um, 15. A hacking group by the name of the Impact Team claimed responsibility for a cybersecurity breach at Ashley Madison, a dating site specifically marketed towards those looking to cheat on their partners. Promoting extramarital Base. affairs and secret flings with the tagline, Life is short, have an affair. The data hack resulted in the information of up to 38 million stupid. members being leaked publicly online. With so many people being exposed, it was only to be expected for some celebrities to be named too, the biggest of which being none other than Joshua Duggar. The extensive 
months of media coverage to follow only prolonged the Duggars' already nightmarish summer by reporting on the nature of Josh's extramarital activities, which had been hidden from even the family up until this point. Gawker publishing evidence of a credit card belonging to Joshua J. Duggar, with a billing address that matched the home of his grandmother, Mary Duggar, in Fayetteville, a house that had been repeatedly shown on their TLC program, also where Josh's wife Anna had given birth to their first child. It was reported Josh had paid a little over $1,000 for two separate Ashley Madison subscriptions dating from February 2013 to May 2015, his second account being linked to his own home in Maryland, where he spent his time lobbying against gay marriage, conveniently enough. Apparently he was too busy worrying about two dudes kissing to focus on preserving the sanctity of his own marriage. What's even funnier is it would seem on his second account, he paid an extra $250 for an affair guarantee membership package, which meant that if you had not had an affair after three months of using the site, you'd get your money back, which is so deplorable, I really can't even put it into words. The leak also contained the turn-ons and- How do you even make that guarantee? What the fuck? Okay preferences he included in his profile. And after doing some more digging, spectators were also led to this OkCupid profile that matched both the email and username associated with Josh's Ashley Madison account. But if you'll notice, the name and profile pic here is obviously not Josh Duggar. What it looked like he had done was simply Google the words random guy and use the first pic that popped up to flirt with girls on both OkCupid and Facebook. And looking at these profiles now, they definitely contain all the hallmarks of the Catfish account. This bio is so generic and impersonal, it could have only been written by someone like Josh Duggar. A man so discreet his Ashley Madison username seemingly consisted of Josh the man and ready for this dick. I'm sorry. This situation's fucked, but Josh the man or ready for this dick. Incredible. 30-year-old man, by the way. Matthew McCarthy, the man who is actually in this photo, was understandably shocked to see his image being thrown into the controversy, claiming he had already lost one DJ gig because the club thought he was involved in this scandal. He even oh pursued God. legal action against Josh that was later tossed out when Josh's defense argued he couldn't be sued in the state of California. It's still very funny that despite being one of the most supposedly online people in the family, Josh really didn't think any of this through, which hasn't changed much in recent years, but I digress. While Josh's response didn't acknowledge the Catholic- Josh the cock? Duggar. Is that what we're saying here? claims he did go on to confirm the validity of the Ashley Madison account, calling himself the biggest hypocrite ever in a now-deleted statement posted to the family's website. Josh's brief words here also outline another side of himself the public was previously unaware of, his porn addiction. Admitting he had been unfaithful to his wife and writing about the hurt and reproach he brought to his family through his actions, not just as a teenager, but also now that he had rebroken their trust. He asks for forgiveness from those reading and requests we pray for his wife and family, right before another woman came forward with her own allegations allegations against Josh. Adult star Danica Dillon filing a suit that year accusing Josh of sexually assaulting her, causing physical and mental torment. Dillon what? alleged Josh had quote tried to kill her during one of their sexual encounters, saying he forced her into various positions. Wait, is this like a paid worker? From those reading as a teenager, but I'll be posh. Adult star Danica Dillon filing so like, did he pay her to have sex? That year, what? accusing Josh of sexually assaulting her, causing physical and mental torment. Dylan alleged Josh had quote tried to kill her during one of their sexual encounters. Saying since she's an adult star, how did this interaction happen? Forced her into various positions, threw her around the room, choked and spat on her before ultimately paying her fifteen hundred bucks. As the story goes, he apologized to her the second time they met, telling her he was such a big fan of her scenes. Josh has since denied these claims though, and Danica eventually dropped the five hundred thousand dollar charges in twenty sixteen. Though his main I don't even know where that's where what's going on there. It sounds like that they he paid for sex for them, and then she he might have gotten way too aggressive or something. Or I don't even know. That's possibly true. Uh, you know, possible that he paid for aggressive sex too, and that he went so far and did fucking traumatize the fuck out of her. I don't really know, but Jesus Christ, okay her story and has also continued commenting on his recent criminal activity. After three separate sex scandals, some unsavory political endorsements, and a repugnant appearance on Fox News, the Duggar's reputation- I'm surprised Ted Cruz. I'm surprised that Ted Cruz would support the, the anti-gay marriage ship. My first time catching you live, salutations from sunny South Africa. Hey, what's up, brother? Or sister. Very poggers. Had never been in a worse place. So in December 2015, in what I feel was an act of sympathy, TLC launched a new Duggar show called Counting On, which was meant to center on the lives of the oldest Duggar girls. After all, the Duggars still had 18 other kids to exploit, with or without Josh, not to mention a slew of grandchildren, since many of their older kids had gone off and started their own families at a pretty young age. With enough time, people even started to come back around on Jim Bob and Michelle a little bit, overlooking the past and thinking of Josh to be a one-time offense that occurred over a decade prior. 
here. Some people okay. seriously thought Josh had been cured by the religious counseling he received and would be unlikely to offend again. Unfortunately, those people were very, very wrong. In November 2019, the Department of Homeland Security executed a full-on search warrant of a used car dealership. Fucking up. Department of Homeland Security got involved? Goddamn owned and operated by Josh Duggar in what authorities called an ongoing federal investigation. A then spokesperson for the Duggars apparently told the media that the raid had nothing to do with any family member being the target of any investigation of any kind, and that we shouldn't be so quick to buy into all the fake news circulating online. Fake Their words, news, not mine. Baby. Still, the incident immediately hit the headlines, along with rumors this was all connected to a lawsuit regarding real estate fraud. The true details, though, it didn't emerge until April 29th, 2021, when Josh was taken into custody. It was then it revealed that Josh's work computer had been linked to downloads of child pornography on several occasions in mid 2019. First flagged by a detective in Little Rock, authorities quickly traced the files to an IP address matching the Jesus car dealership, Christ. which agents explained to Josh during the raid. Despite having many questions for the police, Josh seemed to know exactly why they were there. With Homeland Security Special Agent Jared Faulkner later testifying that before any officials alluded to a child investigation, Josh spontaneously chimed in, what is this about? Has someone been downloading child I know Josh's slimeball attorney was happy about that little comment. It didn't take long for investigators to search his HP desktop computer in his office and find mm. that it was riddled with illicit material. As director of the Department of Jeez. Justice's High Technology Investigative Unit, James Fottrell testified in court. Providing irrelevant evidence from his forensic investigation, Fottrell outlined a dire picture of Josh's illegal activity. For starters, it was confirmed that a program to install a Linux operating system was downloaded to Josh's computer just days before the illicit material was flagged. According to legal documents, Fottrell discovered that the computer's user had partitioned the hard drive in two sections. One side of the hard drive was the business side of the computer, which was said to load up Windows 10 like normal and handle all of the dealership's sales. It was the main part of the computer, and it's also where a program called Covenant Eyes had been installed, which according to Insider, is designed to monitor the internet activity of people with pornography addictions, sending internet usage reports to an accountability partner, which in this case- Wait, what? like normal and handle all of the dealership's sales. It was the main part of the computer, and it's also where a program called Covenant Eyes had been installed, which according to Insider, is designed to monitor the- Protect your family on the internet? So is this like a religious fucking thing to try to protect your family from looking at pornography? What the fuck? The internet activity of people himself? with pornography addictions, sending internet usage reports to an accountability partner, which in this case happened to be Josh's wife, Anna. This is why Josh- Jesus Christ! Josh needed the partition. As court records documented, the other side of the hard drive appears to have been set up for the purpose of downloading and viewing at child pornography. This side booted up to a okay. Linux-based operating system that was locally installed on the computer on May 13th, 2019. Why would you do that at work? It sounds like, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe this will correct me, is that like he, there was a thing on the computer to make sure he wasn't looking at porn from his wife because he had a porn addiction. So he had like a second, second side of the computer downloaded so he could look at well, child porn to overcome that? 19. At approximately 1.52 p.m., Mr. Fottrell's forensic imaging of the computer revealed that child pornography was first downloaded on May 14th, 2019, with the help of the Tor browser, whose hidden servers allow users to access the dark web where things like drugs, guns, murder for hire, and child pornography can be obtained. It was okay. proven in court that the HP computer in question had bookmarked two of these sites that contained lists of Tor's criminal anonymous websites. At that point in the trial, the prosecution was able to place Josh Duggar at the dealership at the exact time the material was being downloaded, thanks to the Jesus. fact that he literally texted his wife at the exact same time these files were accessed, saying he was going to be home late because he still had a lot of work to do. Via Insider, Fottrell said Duggar's phone sent a message on May 15th saying, I'm on the car lot now. Just minutes after that text, Duggar's desktop computer downloaded a number of child sexual abuse files from the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network uTorrent. So Josh's own text messages made it pretty hard for his defense to haphazardly shift blame onto another another employee who must have been trying to incriminate Josh, which officials were quick to dismiss early. So yes, Josh was more than happy to let an innocent co-worker face 40 years in prison if it meant he could get off scot-free and Jesus spend more Christ. time with his family, where he'd still be in active danger. As prosecutors had no problem proving without a shadow of a doubt that Josh Duggar had been the individual downloading and opening these files. As investigators testified in court, a hard drive was found with remnants of over 100 images of child abuse material, along with several videos in what Agent Faulkner referred to as the worst of the worst child abuse material he had ever seen in his career as a hardened federal agent who's required to review this kind of stuff for a living. After 12 years of work and over a thousand cases- Yeah, I'm surprised this, this video isn't sponsored by like a VPN, bro. Um, 
I make that joke all the time, bro. People use that shit for fucked up shit, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> This is Faulkner considered Josh to be one of the absolute worst offenders. The prosecution also used Director Fottrell's testimony to build their case, as he has cited evidence of Josh streaming and or downloading the most notorious videos out there, including titles such as Pedo Mom and Daisy's Destruction, which depicts the torturing of an infant, Fottrell claiming it to be the most offensive content he had ever seen in his career. A lot of the material contained girls between the ages of 5 and 10, an age range that some of his own children are in. The word sickening doesn't go far enough in describing the kind of person we're dealing with here. Jesus Despite Christ. several letters written to the judge by Josh's parents, wife, and in-laws pleading for a softer sentence, these words were ultimately overlooked when Josh was sentenced to 12 years and 7 months in prison, just one day after Josh's failed attempt to overturn the guilty verdict on account of insufficient evidence. Unfortunately for Josh, the evidence proved more sufficient than his laughable defense of trying to throw his own colleagues under the bus. While it may have been delayed for almost two decades, Joshua Duggar finally met his long overdue fate and will be spending over 150 months in federal prison. Even then, when he does get out, he'll only be allowed to see his seven kids in the presence of an approved list of supervisors. All to say oh, that life yeah. for Josh as he once knew is effectively over. Prosecutors writing at the end of the trial that there is simply no indication that Duggar will ever take the steps necessary to change this pattern of behavior and address his predilection for minor females, indicating that the pattern of abuse Josh has expressed for all these years has in no way changed or been appropriately corrected, leading anyone to wonder just how different things could have been honestly yeah i mean if the if this was dealt with correctly this to me and i could be wrong but it seems like it started as a behavioral issue that the parents didn't accurately deal with and it turned into like an actual full-blown fucking horrible pedophilic case welcome back we're here with josh duggar uh you were working with frc so tell us a little about what's happening here with the values voter summit this week well we're extremely excited to have you know really what i think has been called the premier conservative event in the country and it's basically people coming together, a lot of people of faith, and people that understand what made America great and what's going to continue to make America uh, really the, the best country in the entire world. And the laboratory for that is in our own homes, in our own communities, and really in our own hearts. Well, I don't think Josh's spirituality is the reason he did what he did. It's clear to me the culture surrounding Josh and his parents allowed him to get away with it. For yeah. It's, no, no, no. It's not an allow. Okay. So it didn't allow him to get away with it. It sets the stage perfectly for these types of ideologies. When you have a, a system that encourages like not going to the police, keeping it within your family, um, somewhat shaming people that get sexually abused uh, for their own sexual abuse, focuses too much on spiritual healing rather than dealing with actual psychological things, um, advocates for like just having a oh God, apologize to God rather than actually dealing with the situation. Um, it puts it in a scenario where you have 19 fucking kids and like the older kids are, are, are raising the younger kids. When you have all these different situations, you're setting somebody up for the ability to potentially act on behavioral issues that it would, may have been originally and turn into full-blown fucking pedophilic issues. The parents are to blame more than anything else, and this guy's disgusting. But, like, you know, he is what he is now, and you can't just be like, well, you know, it's not his fault, blah, blah, blah. No, you have to obviously punish him for the fucking shit that he did. But, I mean, this fucking, it's, it's insane how fucked this is. For far too long, Jim Bob neglected to contact outside authorities several times, all while his daughters continued being abused in their own house. And the belated treatment Josh did receive just wasn't enough for him to break such a deplorable cycle, finally landing yeah. him in jail where he belongs. I can't True. help but think this could have gone differently had his behavior not been repeatedly excused and downplayed by his parents and even political allies of the family, with former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee who defended the Duggars in 2016. You don't know what those parents did and how they worked to try to take care of their entire family. And, and maybe they did think, and that's probably it's part of the problem too, is they probably thought that, that they were doing was the right thing. And that's all, that's, it's all these different situations of just like shit like this fucking happening. Um, where it's like, yeah, the parents did the right thing. Oh, I thought they did the right thing. You thought they did because you turned to God instead of like an actual therapist, right? But a blogger Matt Walsh even using the story as an opportunity to slam progressives as being the real hypocrites, writing, let me be honest with you. What? Story as an opportunity Matt to Walsh. slam progressives. A Christian failing to live up to his faith does not make him a hypocrite. It makes him cowardly. Perhaps it makes him selfish. It makes him flawed. What? Duggars aren't hypocrites. Progressives are? How? This is being the real hypocrites, writing, let me be honest. I know I still love to see your Christians here, but let me be honest with you. If my own son, God forbid, came to me admitting to doing what Josh Duggar did, I don't know how, I don't know that I'd immediately run to the cops. Would you, is it really that simple? The decision to have your child arrested for a sex offender would be an automatic thing for you, really? 
I guess I'm not a horrible, a horrible person. Then. That's really not the issue. The issue is they didn't. Well, I mean, it is an issue. But if they're 14, the bigger issue is not getting like the correct help for your child more than anything else. Um, you do you think that it's because he had zero sexual zero sexual experiences that went down this path? No, hold on. Okay, so I've had like pretty in depth conversations about this with my wife before. Uh, about like because we were, we were she has a she she's a behavioral specialist for like adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities, right? So this is a topic we've talked about because some of the people in the group homes that she deals with um, have pedophilia, um, like not the ones she directly works at. Or, uh, but like ones that like were within her system. So, you know, these are things we've talked about. And the DSM defines a pedophile as somebody who is 16 years or, or older uh, who, you know, molests somebody five years younger than them that is in like a prepubescent phase. I think it's up to 13, right? The, that's technically pedophilia. And he was 14 when he started this like a pattern of abuse. So there's like a myriad of different issues that could happen. One could have been absolute sexual uh, re repression. I think that's definitely a factor. Um, generally, this would be considered like a behavioral issue because he wasn't 16 yet. Young kids tend to experiment with each other sexually, whether you like it or not. 12-year-olds are doing gross shit with 12-year-olds. I remember when I was 12, like I had other f male friends that were my age. And, it's, you know, this is something that's somewhat common. People won't really admit it, but it's somewhat common. The biggest issue is that it's happening to somebody that's so much younger than him. And instead of dealing with this behavioral issue, um, they just kind of repress it and seems like a spiritual bullshit fucking idiot camp. There's the experimentation process. There's the fact that there's sexual repression. There's the fact that they're putting kids like 14 year olds into the role of being like basically parents in some capacity by having like the 14 year olds raise the five year olds. It sets up for this like pattern and ability of like constant abuse. There's the aspect of because they're I forget what they called it at the beginning of the video. They're basically like pseudo parents. It robs them of their childhood. So there's also an aspect of him maybe possibly trying to reclaim that childhood. We don't really know. There's a ton of different things that could be happening. He could have his own potential trauma-esque response. Ultimately, this, this, this fear of the shit that was going on and was what led to this problem, not getting the correct help, uh, making the kids be parents to other kids. Uh, sexual repression conversations um this like you know his, like him being in this direct power role over five-year-olds right and experimenting with children it's a lot of fuck shit man there's a totally ton of different things it doesn't make what he did okay he just didn't get the help that he needed before things got worse now he's like looking at violent fucking child rape porn it's insane do we go like, oh, it's not his fault? No, he's a fucking adult now. We obviously can't be like super empathetic. It's more of a conversation and like a looking at like, damn, what happened to cause this situation? And it's like a, it's like a mixture of these different issues. Plus, the parents not accurately and pro uh, uh, properly dealing with the scenario. They dealt with it the best that they thought that they could, probably, but it's just not the right way to operate. And it shows the potential power dynamic issues that can arise when this to like when you have this type of fucking uh, very religious dynamic going on. That's what it comes down to, you know. And I, from my what I think, and I could be totally wrong, but nobody is that like this. This kid probably wasn't a pedophile, but had like these behavioral issues that were never addressed, and then it turned into full blown pedophilia as they got older. That's what I think. This review. If my own son, God forbid, it came to me and admitted to doing what Josh Duggar did, I don't know that I'd immediately run to the cops. Would you? Is it really that simple? The decision to have your child arrested as a sex offender would be an automatic thing for you? Really? It's this kind of dismissive language that both invalidates victims of child sexual trauma and allows their abusers to continue down a path of destruction. What's possibly more disturbing than anything is this excerpt from a 1998 TI lesson booklet detailing the story of a young boy who abused his younger sibling in which the boy blames his behavior on a lack of moral purity and the immodest nature of his siblings, even. The excerpt reading, My younger sisters used to wear dresses often, but as they were young and not aware of modesty, they did not behave in them as they should. Little people do not realize their nakedness right away. While this is just oh, one of thousands of documents to come out of the ATI program over the years, it certainly echoes a familiar sentiment we've heard from the Duggars. Throughout years of Duggar family controversies, countless mistakes could have been avoided. Mistakes that ended up perpetuating a cycle of abuse, 
infecting countless people by proxy. Jim Bob and Michelle, though, seem to care more about their family looking like stars on TV than actually addressing the real issues at the root of their household. It all comes down to maintaining an image of purity above all else, even when real criminal activity can be found lurking behind the scenes. Placing yourself on a public pedestal despite knowingly protecting a criminal in your own family is bad enough, but attempting to paint yourself as a beacon of spirituality in the process is even worse. As much as I know the Duggars will probably try to continue existing in the public eye, the fact remains that they've already shown us exactly who they are when the cameras are off. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that was a fucking hell of a video, man. That's just crazy. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face But just as a friend There's nothing weird about that I want him to pee on my face 